Mason Greenwood price set, Harry Maguire injury scare, and a short list of managers to replace Eric Ten Hag. These are some of the stories we will be discussing on the show this morning. But before we jump into that, please smash a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get straight on into it. So let's start off with the Harry Maguire story. This is coming out from uh, multiple different sources this morning, that apparently Harry Maguire has left the England camp and has been sent for a scan for a potential injury. Now, I mean, it's not ideal, is it? But what I will say is this, obviously, Lissandra Martinez is expected to be back uh, in time for the game this Saturday against Brentford. So that's a massive injury boost. Uh, Maguire is what fifth choice centre back realistically when everyone's fit. So Martinez and Varane, in my opinion, are the, are the best two centre backs we have at the club. Um, then I'd probably say Lindelof and, and Johnny Evans, and then I'd say Maguire is the fifth option. Uh, and then if Luke Shaw's fit as well, I'd put Luke Shaw ahead of him, of him as the left sided centre back. So although it's disappointing for one of our players to be injured, um, I think it's kind of happened at an okay time just because we know that Lissandra Martinez will be back. We know that uh, Johnny Evans and Lindelof are, are available. So we've got cover in that position. So it's not the end of the world, although it is obviously disappointing. And hopefully Harry Maguire gets back fit soon. Um, moving on to the next story, we are going to talk, we're going to keep in the topic of centre-backs actually, because it's really, really difficult to shy away from this story. It's literally all over the place over this weekend. There's so many different people coming out with this story that apparently Manchester United are on the brink of signing Boca Juniors centre-back Aaron Anselmino. Never heard of him, being completely honest. He's 18 years of age. Um, he has a release clause of around £17 million. Now, my understanding that Manchester United's plan is to buy him, loan him back to Boca Juniors, and then bring him back in the future. So this is very much someone for the future. Um... I'll be honest, guys, I've never heard of him. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and pretend that I'm some expert in Argentinian football because I'm simply not. All I know is that he's a centre-back, he's Argentinian, and he plays for Boca Juniors. Um, from the from the little bits of clips I've seen of him and the, the, the bits of information that I've seen, he's fast, he's strong. Some people are comparing him to, to Marcus Rojo, but I think that's just because it's an obvious connection, you know, uh, opposed to his actual kind of abilities. He has just signed a new contract though at um at Boca Juniors, but there is apparently this release clause which effectively will allow him to leave uh for a fee of around 17 million euros. This season he's played seven times for Boca Juniors, which I mean that's not that much, is it? Like sorry, he's only ever played seven times in his whole career for Boca Juniors. He's played once for Boca Juniors this season. Let's have a look how many times he played last season. Uh last season he played five games in all competitions. I'm going to be completely blunt with you here. I, I personally think that this is the agent of the player trying to garner up interest for him because I don't really see why Manchester United would be willing to spend £17 million on somebody who's only ever played one game in the Argentinian league. Like, it doesn't really add up to me. And I think that this just screams of journalists being fed information by an agent who's hungry to get their player removed to the Premier League. That's what it seems like to me. Um, because there's literally four or five different people saying the same thing. It says, Boca Juniors centre-back is on the Manchester United radar, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got another person saying, Manchester United are determined to buy Boca Juniors centre-back Aaron and Slamino. United's intention is to buy him and loan him back to another team in Europe to adapt. Yeah, let's, let, let, I mean, let's wait and see. I just think that £17 million for somebody who has only ever played a couple of games at a professional level and is only 18 years of age. It could either be incredible and he might turn into the best centre-back in the world or it could be another player who we bring in and effectively nothing happens with them. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to get particularly excited about this at the moment. I think, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the thing you also have to consider as well, Dan Ashworth isn't even in the door yet. So like who scouted this player? Who has signed off bringing in this player for £17 million? We're being told that we need to sell players in order to buy players. And we're being led to believe that somebody's given the sign off to sign a £17 million 18-year-old who's only ever played a couple of professional games in their career. Like, it doesn't add up to me. So for me personally, I'm just going to say that that one's probably rubbish. But you never know. You never know what football, do you? Like, maybe Manchester United have started doing proper scouting Maybe they've decided that this guy is going to be the best centre-back in the world in five years. And maybe we'll be sat here in three years' time saying, what an amazing signing. But for me personally, I don't think it's going to happen. But um, if anybody's heard of him or, or has seen him before, let me know in the comment section. But yeah, I've never heard of him. Um, 
I wanted to give you guys a bit of an update as well on uh, Malasia because I get asked so much in the comments section, what's going on with Malasia? Where is he? Have you heard anything? So there was a journalist who came out last night um, saying that apparently Malasia is struggling with a physical condition. So obviously we know that because he's been injured. Uh, it doesn't say what the injury is. And he says he's also struggling with mental problems. Th this journalist is pretty reliable. Um, but I don't know. I, I think you have to take everything with a pinch of salt. Like this is the only journalist coming out of w w with this story. So yeah, I mean, there's so many crazy rumors going around about Malasia and I kind of prefer to stick to facts. So we know that he's injured. So let's just kind of leave it at that for now. Um, you know, mental problems. I don't know. I mean, even if you look at it on the on a very basic level, if you're out injured for a year, that's going to really mess up your mental health, isn't it? Of course it is, because you're going to be disappointed that you're not playing. It's going to, you know, you know what it's like. I mean, this is a bit of a basic analogy, but say you're ill and you can't go out for a week and you can't, you know, go to work or you can't go and see your friends. Like that's going to make you feel down, isn't it? Somewhat. So imagine the one thing you love or one of the one things you love is football and you can't play football for a year. Like that's really not going to, no one's going to be like, oh, this is amazing. I'm so happy. Like, so I, I get it. I get it in some, some extent, but obviously mental health is such a broad spectrum that we don't know obviously exactly what's going on with him. So I don't want to really, I, I just hope, I just wish him all the best really. And I hope that Malasia comes back soon and comes back strong because I think for the amount of money we paid for Malasia, I thought he was a really good signing. And I think, um, you know, he's not world-class by any means, but I think as a, as, a, as a backup option, I think he was a good signing. And, and to think that we only paid about, was it about 12 million pounds around that kind of figure? Like, I think he was a really good signing for, for that amount of money. So I, I hope he comes back soon and I hope that he is okay. Um, and I will obviously keep you updated as and when I get more information on that story. Uh, moving over to Mason Greenwood, which I know a lot of you are really interested in. There's a couple of different journalists in Spain reporting that apparently Atletico Madrid have been in contact with Manchester United over the potential signing of Mason Greenwood this summer. There is a but though. Apparently Man United are asking for 50 million pounds for Mason Greenwood. What's that? About 60 million euros. And apparently Atletico believe this price is outrageous. That's what the story says. I mean, 50 million pounds sounds about right to me. But when you think that all of these other clubs know that Manchester United want to sell him, all of these other clubs know that I think he's only got one year left of his contract. When you look at it like that, and when you're selling to a team in La Liga, which obviously generally have less money, maybe 60 million euros is a lot of money for, for Atletico Madrid. That, that's a massive amount of money. I know they, they spent loads on Joao Felix and they have spent money in the past, but um, yeah, I mean, if you look at their signings from last summer, the most expensive player they bought was uh, Antoine Griezmann. They bought from Barcelona for 22 million euros. And now they're being quoted 60 million euros for Mason Greenwood. Now I know Antoine Griezmann is a lot older and he's at a different stage of his career. So it's kind of different. One's 33 and I think Mason Greenwood is 23. So it's not really comparable. But just to give you a bit of context, you know, they usually buy players around the kind of 20 million euros mark, unless it's, um, you know, unless it's like a Joao Felix, who was their big record signing. Um, I mean, that, that, what, a, what a mess of a signing that was as well. Just just thinking about it, you know, to have, sp to have signed him for, what was it, like 100 million euros and then to loan him to Barcelona. And apparently he's going to stay at Barcelona. Um, yeah, it's, it's mad, isn't it? But I'm just looking at their other transfers. So yeah, they bought, uh, they bought uh, Thomas Lamar for 72 million. They bought Diogo Costa, centre forward for 60 million. So yeah, I mean, th most of their top signings are around the kind of 60 million. 60 million euros mark <laughs> um but yeah i'll keep you updated on that one guys i want you obviously to let me know in the comment section how much do you think mason greenwood is worth in the current market all things considered he's got one year left of his contract it's open knowledge that manchester united are looking to sell him which obviously puts his value down so remember that when you're kind of putting your comments in uh but let me know um and just keep it on mason greenwood as well gazetta in italy which is uh, a massive outlet, magazine, newspaper, are reporting this morning that apparently Juventus are very interested in signing Mason Greenwood. So there's definitely a demand there for Mason Greenwood. There's a couple of players at Juventus, which I would quite like to come to Manchester United. Um, obviously, we're heavily linked to um, the centre-back Bremer. Not that keen on him, being completely honest, but you know, if someone said to me, you could swap Mason Greenwood for Bremer, I would probably do it because then that means we've got our centre-back sorted and it means that we don't have to 
use any of our allocated budget for this summer on a new centre-back because you've got one already and Bremer is a good player. Uh, he wouldn't be my number one target as centre-back personally, but if there was some sort of deal you could do where Bremer came to Manchester United and Mason Greenwood went to to uh, Juventus, I think that would make sense. Um, obviously, there's another player that I really, really like, and that is Chiesa. I think he is quality. I think he'd be an incredible signing. And uh, as far as I'm aware, he plays in the same position as Mason Greenwood, doesn't he? As you know, he plays left wing, right wing striker. He can play in lots of positions. He's about, you know, he's a similar profile player, I think. He probably is worth a little bit more, but th those are the kind of deals I'd be looking at. You know, maybe we bring in Chiesa or Bremer and we send Mason Greenwood to Juventus. I think that would be interesting. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about that. Chiesa, Bremer, exchange for, for Mason Greenwood. Let me know what you think. I, I would be open to that. And I think that that would make sense. Um, final story we've got for you on the show this evening is coming out from Rob Dawson. Uh, this evening, it's the morning, sorry. This morning, it's coming up from Rob Dawson. Um, and it's about the manager position. I know people are sick about this. I, I just think it's absolutely disgraceful, really, that all of these journalists are coming out after Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag got probably their best win in about 10 years. Now, don't take that out of context. I know winning against Liverpool isn't a trophy, but... That game as a whole was one of the most entertaining games of football I've seen in the last 10 years. From a Manchester United's perspective, you know, most of the time our football isn't entertaining, regardless of who the manager is. And uh, beating Liverpool and stopping them in their final season with Klopp to get a treble or a quadruple, that's a big achievement. Like, I mean, not an achievement. That, make, that makes it seem like, you know, we celebrate and we accept winning Liverpool as a trophy. That isn't what I mean. I just mean... It was a big win. It was a big performance. And the fact that all of these journalists throughout the international break have just been ramming down our throat, Gareth Southgate, blah, 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 blah. I think it's pretty dis disrespectful, to be honest. And um, as much as I dislike Gareth Southgate from a managerial perspective, and I don't want him anywhere near Man United, when he spoke about his links to Manchester United in an interview a couple of days ago, he did handle himself very well. And he said, you know, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, and he was very respectful about it all. But that doesn't really change my perspective. I don't want Gareth Southgate. Now, Rob Dawson this morning has apparently got the short list of who the new manager could be. He's saying that the list of people are Southgate, Graham Potter, De Zerbi, Thomas Frank, who's obviously the Brentford manager, Thomas Tuchel, Julian Lopetegui, Zinedine Zidane, Ruben Amorin or Nagelsmann. Um, I, I want to stick with Ten Hag for one more year, personally. One more year with Ten Hag and then maybe... If it, you know, if we're, if we're not doing well, very well at Christmas, then maybe there's a view to to move him on. But for me, give him one more season with, you know, Dan Ashworth, Omar Barada, one more season with Ineos and a proper transfer budget and kind of just see where we go from there. I think that's the best option because every other one of these managers is going to be a two or three year project and we'll be in the same position in a year's time and people will say, Get him out, get him out. Do you see what I'm saying? So you may as well at least try and run the course of this process. If it works, great. We'll all say, I'm so happy we kept him. If it doesn't work, then you move him on and you start again. Uh, but that's my view anyway. Obviously, you can let me know if you disagree. Uh, I'm going to wrap the show up here, guys. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined me on the show this morning. If you have enjoyed today's video, please leave a like comment, subscribe. It doesn't cost any money. It really helps the, the channel. So please do that before you go. This has been Daily Red Devil. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll speak to you all a bit later.